I've spent over a million dollars on trucks here at our lawn care company, and this is the only one that I recommend. All right, so 10 years ago, I started the company Yard Dogs Lawn Care, and throughout this process, we have gone through a lot of different vehicles. Now, yes, we've gone all in on one type of truck, but it wasn't always like this. We started off always buying used vehicles, and throughout the entire journey of our company over the past 10 years, we've gone through dozens of different trucks. Now, partially, we went through such a variety of trucks because we were always buying things as we could afford them, usually always in the used market. But at first, when we started, we were doing a of different services because we didn't know quite yet what our niche was. We were doing commercial snow removal, we were doing lawn mowing, fertilizer weed control, landscaping, window washing, gutter cleaning. We were doing a wealth of services so it was really hard to nail down what kind of truck we needed. But once we really took the plunge about four years ago into our niche, which we chose to be fertilizer and weed control, we tested a couple of different vehicles, but we determined that only one truck really made sense for the type of spraying that we were doing. And today, we're gonna go through the entire history of those vehicles, why some worked better than others, and we're gonna go down to the very bottom of the distillery to let you know what our outcome is. All right, so the first truck we ever had was a 1995 Toyota Previa. And no, this was not by choice. It was the one that my parents said, hey, if you want to start your own lawn care business, here's this piece of crap. And that's kind of what it was, honestly. This thing was retro and it looked like a spaceship. Rust all over the place. It had no muffler, so it sounded like a spaceship as it drove down the road. But you know what? There was enough room in the back to hold a power rake. There was enough room in the back to hold barely an aerator. And you could also get a mower in there as well. So we rocked this minivan throughout our entire season. But you know what? It was actually a backup plan. At first, we had an old F-150 XL. And that truck was awesome. It was green. It was going to be the start of the Yard Dogs truck. But I think about four days into business, we got T-boned on an intersection. It was kind of my fault. So we lost that truck. We went right into the minivan right away. So the first things I just wanna say, if you're ever someone starting off the lawn care company, the one, number one rule of entrepreneurship is you use what you've got. There's no need to go get the wallet out and buy the nicest this, the nicest of that. You're just starting out your business. You don't even know if you have a viable business yet. Let's bootstrap everything we can and let's try to keep this as frugal as possible. So I highly recommend your first vehicle should be the one that you already have. My younger brother, he started his mowing business literally out of his Toyota Corolla and he was mowing lawns all the time just literally going there having this more fold out and get going right away so we used our 1995 Toyota Brevia and that's one we started with but I you know praise the heavens day that we actually got our first truck our first truck was an F-150 XL is a 2006 it was actually manual and that was the first time we ever had a company now I always recommend getting white trucks because of how clean of a decal you can put on it the uh, decals I think are a huge way for you to be a driving billboard and it's very important that you keep it simple some companies and trust me we were like this too we put services everywhere all over the truck letting them know that we did window washing lawn mowing landscape and all these things but when someone's driving by you you have to stand out and you have to be remembered and when you're throwing at them you know just absolutely vomiting all these different services all over them they're gonna go home and think what was that company again uh, I don't even remember what they did. Oh, whatever. Not an important thing. On a truck decal, it really should just be showing your logo of the company and making it very clear what your company name is and perhaps just having the truck represent itself of what kind of services you do. Perhaps a slogan, you know, the grass is greener on this side or we make lawns green and weed free. Something very simple. We want to be remembered so that when they go home later, all they have to do is remember your name and they will go to Google, Yard Dogs Lawn Care, and Google will tell them the rest. It'll tell them what your phone number was your website, your prices and stuff. Do not put prices on your truck. I always even don't think you should put a phone number or an email on a truck. It's just too much information. We gotta keep this clean and simple. So that white F-150 was fantastic for us and we started to roll with used F-150s for the first little while. We ended up getting a 2004 F-150, eight foot long box, and then we got a gray one because we couldn't find any white ones for the right price. After we got those two trucks, we actually ended up getting a diesel. We got a nine. Uh, we got a 2003 
F250 7.3 liter diesel, the legendary 7.3 liter engine. Now that thing was loud, it rumbled, it was not powerful, it was terrible on fuel efficiency, but that kind of engine never dies. So that was a good truck that we were actually using in our landscaping because after we got a dump trailer, we needed something that had the capabilities of towing some heavier loads. And that truck was reliable, but we kind of had this fleet where every truck had different decals, every vehicle was different. And although we were using what we had we weren't really building a brand and that got worse over time actually because then we started to get into snow removal now we only ever did commercial snow removal being that we had to put snow plows on the front of the trucks and for that we found the sweet spot for payload capabilities to hold a plow as well as price was usually a 2010 to 2012 ram 2500 Hemi. So we weren't working with diesels because the front end was way too heavy. Like the Cummins engine is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but putting a snow plow on it didn't really make sense. So we were rocking a lot of Hemis for Ram uh, 2500s. We were towing a skid steer with a 2007 Toyota Tundra. So that's a half ton truck towing a skid steer. And by the way, me sharing these stories right now, I hope you're looking at me right now thinking, wow, if he can do it, I can do it. You know, like these stories are just to let you know that, hey, we did not have things figured out and there's still so many things that we're learning along the way. And it's important that you start where you are and learn as you go. So we had all these Ram 2500s, but one day, about four years ago, we decided to go all in on our niche that we determined was gonna be residential lawn care. And by lawn care, I mean literally just making lawns green, healthy, and weed free. So fertilizer, weed control, aerations, soil enhancements, and seeding. That is it. Those five services encompassed into three different lawn care packages was all we were going to do. So we wanted to make sure that we had the capabilities to hold enough weed control to last us two days. And we found that that was a 200 gallon tank that we could actually put inside of an F-150 so long as it had upgraded leaf springs. Now half ton trucks are usually much more affordable than three quarter ton trucks or one ton trucks. And I will get to that a little bit later, but we took our snow plows, we sold them, we kept those trucks, those Ram 2500, and those were fantastic starting trucks for us. Now, once we were doing about a million dollars in revenue, we decided to actually look at doing a fleet of trucks. And by the way, if you're enjoying today's video so far, please make sure you like and subscribe so we can bring you more awesome lawn care content. Now let's get back to the video. We decided to go with their fleet for the tax reasons, but also we want to be the prestige company for lawn care services, the premium brand, you know, the Ritz Carlson of hotels. We want to be that for lawn care services. We aren't going to be the budget lawn care guys. So with that, I truly believe that we needed to look the part. If we show up in a beautiful, shiny truck that has professional decals, professional uniforms, the equipment's all brand new, that person's going to associate that with the kind of quality we are going to instill in their lawn. Because if we're driving up in that 1995, Toyota Previa, you know, we were 19 years old. We were using what we got, that's great, but it wasn't professional. Some people might give us a chance because they love the drive, they love the eagerness, and they love the fact that we were students. But now, you know, 29 years old, I, I want to have a bit more of an established company because this is the 10th year that we've been doing this. So showing up there in a beautiful truck was important for the image that people associated yard dogs with when they saw a truck on the road. And it, that's sort of the same reason why I wanted to always just be a truck that's doing fertilizer and weed control. I didn't want people to see a snow plow on the front or hauling a dump trailer or even like we have friends and family all the time asking yo can I use a yard truck to help move a mattress or something like that and the answer is no because I want when people see our trucks it's they do lawn care and that is it people get confused very easily and your marketing is either going to help you but it can detract you if you're not being careful there so we are very firm on our brand because I truly believe that the brand you build is incredibly valuable and that has a higher return than any other marketing you do over the longest stretch of time so we got those vehicles and we wanted our employees to actually enjoy driving these trucks. Our technicians, they work very hard. They, you know, they are the backbone of yard dogs lawn care. I want them when they're in between driving houses that they turn on the truck and AC blows in their face because it can get really hot there in the summer. They're working incredibly hard getting the jobs done. I want them to feel like we take care of them and we do take care of them with the right equipment, the right vehicles so that they can focus on doing their job. They're not focusing on repairing things or breakdowns, which gets me to my next point. Yes, are new trucks expensive? Absolutely. But you know what's more expensive? not being able to finish the jobs on your route for the day. Because then you have to, one, you don't get the revenue from those jobs. Two, you know, go tell the customers that, hey, we're not gonna make it there today. You let them down. You put friction in their process of having a great experience. And people over time, they can take a couple of those, but then, 
when they're mentally checked out, they're not gonna buy from you next year, regardless of the kind of discounts and how you go above and beyond going forward. If you mess up a few times, you're going to start to lose your customers. They might stick with you for the rest of your contract for the year, but they are out of there come renewal season the following year. So making sure your trucks never break down, they are always working, your equipment is not breaking down your guys is incredibly important. So that price for the new vehicles is a price that we pay because we want to make sure that our employees have the right equipment and our lawns can all get serviced that very day. So this brings me to the truck that we choose to use every single day here, and that is the 2022 F-150 XLT with the crew cab, a six and a half foot box, and with upgraded leaf springs. And here's why we chose each one of those. First of all, we could have chose Dodge, we could have chose Ford, we could have chose GM, Chevrolet, etc. We went with Ford, honestly, a little bit out of emotion. We saw that most of the work trucks we saw on the road were Fords. It was the one that had the highest reviews that we were kind of sold to by the company. They were priced very similarly to the other brands there too. And we decided to make a decision and we chose to roll with Ford. Couple of reasons for this. Number one, I wanna make sure that those doors open to hold dry storage. I don't want fertilizer bags in the bed of the truck. I don't want a whole bunch of tools in the bed of the truck because when it rains, when it snows, we're in Canada after all, it can get really messy very quick. So things have to have dry storage, especially with the granular products. Those fertilizer bags get wet and water gets in, it's toast, it's toast right away. It needs to be on the lawn for when that happens. But the reason we use a crew cab instead of a super cab is because of resale value. People want to buy crew cabs if they're going to be buying it personally because in the back seats you can hold more stuff, more people, you can put a car seat there if you have children and the crew cab can actually is a desired asset by residential owners but also commercial owners. So those crew cabs have a lot more retained value and that's the whole point of what we're doing right now. Like eventually we are going to be swapping these trucks back in to get some new ones and I wanna make sure that we hold on to as much value as possible and if that means we spend a little bit more at the start, I'm okay with that. It's all about the long-term game here. Now we chose the six and a half foot box because an eight foot long box is way too long. You know, we, we don't wanna have unnecessary space. This shop is tight enough as it is, but the five and a half foot box is too short when we have our sprayer tank. There's like almost zero storage anymore. And I believe once you get those upgraded leaf springs, you have to work with the six and a half foot uh, box. The upgraded leaf springs really help us stick with an F-150 instead of having to make the push to an F-2. 250 because then you save about $15,000 going that way. Now, I'll be honest, outside right now, we have two different kinds of vehicles. We have 11 F-150s, but we do have four F-250s. The reason we have those trucks is because Ford stopped putting those upgraded leaf springs on the F-150s. Maybe we're the only company in the entire world that actually bought it with that thing. Now, going forward in retrospect, we're about to get going with our season here. I probably should have just bought the F-150s that I like and then just off market put in the upgraded leaf springs. I got a little bit scared when it came to warranty and all that kind of thing there too, so we did end up buying four new F-250s for the upcoming season, that those are 2023s, but those were about $15,000 each more per truck, which comes out to a total of about $70,000 Canadian per F-250, where the F-150 were all closer to 55. Now, although those F-250s can still do the same kind of work that we're doing with the F-150s with the upgraded leaf springs, there are some differences to note, and let's get into that right now. Okay, now we're outside. Now, that's where these F-250s are because there's no room in that shop for any more vehicles. But these F-250s are a little bit different than the F-150s like I mentioned. First and foremost, we have some steps out here that actually makes it very easy for technicians to go in, grab stuff. I'm not a very tall guy, but even these steps make it easy for me to get up over as I'm filling up the tank, adjusting the tank, adjusting the um, flow of things. Now on the very back, one of my favorite part actually is that they have these steps in addition. So this just means when we're grabbing anything from the back of the truck, for whatever reason, it is very easy and we don't have to always be going to open up the tailgate. Now for the F-250s, we actually went with the XLs because they just kept getting more and more expensive. An F-150, and you bring it back to the whole reason that we wanna sell these on the residential market later, people want to drive an XLT for their personal vehicle. But when it comes to a work truck, XLs are totally fine. Now these vehicles are massive, even with the dogs on top of them. This thing looks like an army tank driving around and 
I will let you guys know what I thought of these F-250s at the end of the season. To be fully transparent, we haven't actually used them yet. The, all these all have less than 100 kilometers on them. But those F-150s, guys, the 2022 F-150s XLTs with the six and a half foot box in the crew cab with the upgraded leaf springs, that's a mouthful, have been a fantastic truck for our lawn care business. So for the full details on the payload and the capacities for both of these trucks, I'm gonna put that down in the description below. But lawn care has been a fantastic business for us, but we can't get the job done without the right tools for the job. And these F-150s and F-250s are definitely that tool to get her done.